Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools to encourage you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with five or six brand new Valentine home decor DIYs that are quick and easy to make but look great. So let's get crafting. For our first DIY today, we're going to take this hanging heart sign from Dollar Tree, a board, some ribbon, and some metal hearts from a different Dollar Tree sign, and we're going to make a larger piece. First, I'm going to take this sign from Michaels, and I'm going to give it a coat of Waverly Antique Wax. Of course, you could paint this board whatever color you would choose. With the antique wax, I'm just gonna brush it on and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel and let it dry completely. Now you can find these hanging signs usually every Valentine's um, at Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the five hearts by taking the ribbon off of the back and any of the paper. And then I'm also going to take these two metal galvanized hearts that are from a different sign from Dollar Tree. Now, I put the hearts on two different of these polka dot um, hearts. Actually, what I wanted to do is to put them on the two pink polka dot hearts, but it doesn't really matter. You can just put them, add them to your second and fourth hearts when you then put these all back in a row. Then to add a little bit of color down the center of our board, I'm going to take this two inch wide ribbon and I'm gonna put two lengths of it down the length of the board, securing it to the board at the top and bottom and also onto the back. This is a really quick and easy way to add some color. And to be honest, I'm gonna be gluing everything to the ribbon so that if I want to reuse this board, I can just remove the ribbon and it will take the hearts off as well. You can see I went two thicknesses or widths of the ribbon, and then I'm gluing, like I said, those hearts back on to the ribbon. They're a little more spread out, and now they have that thicker band of pink ribbon behind them. Once we get all five of our hearts glued onto our ribbon on our board, then I'm gonna take a variety of my Valentine ribbons. I'm gonna cut two lengths of each one, dovetail the ends, and then tie them together to make a messy bow for the top of our project. Then once we get our pieces of ribbon stacked, crisscross, left, right, left, right, left, right, all the way to the top, we're gonna take a thin piece of jute twine and we're gonna tie that at the back, scrunching all of the layers of ribbon together. Tie it super tight, you can trim off the extra, and then you can just fluff out the pieces of your bow. Um, that top layer, the thin layer of ribbon is not wired, but the rest of it is, uh, except for that dark pink and white check at the back. Once you have your ribbon or your bow how you want it, you can glue it at the top. And I did also add a Dollar Tree little wood heart to the center as well. For 
For DIY number two, we're gonna do a little paper crafting today, making a little treat box out of cardstock for these Little Debbie Valentine snack cakes. I think these could work for any season, just changing up the paper. So I'm taking an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, and on the 11 inch side, I'm going to cut it down to seven and a half inches. This will give me like my template on the white here, seven and a half by eight and a half. And I'm showing where I'm gonna score the seven and a half side at one inch and at six and a half inches. That's gonna give me a one inch score on either side. Now, I will eventually move my trimmer over, but what I'm doing is I'm lining it up at the one inch and I'm using an embossing tool or a scoring tool in the same uh, crevice that the trimmer blade usually goes in. Then on the eight and a half side, we're gonna score it at two and a half, three and a half, six, and seven. This is gonna give us all the folding lines to make this really cute treat box. And like I said, you can take this basic template, change it up with the colors and the pattern card stack that you use to go along with whatever holiday or celebration it is and your little treat that's gonna go inside. So once you have all the score marks made, you can go ahead and just fold on all of those fold lines, working them in, going the horizontal and the vertical way on our paper. Now we are going to cut a couple pieces out from our template here, and I'll show you that in just a second once we get those um, creases bone folded if we need to. Now on this shorter side, we're gonna cut out the two side squares. As you can see here, this is actually gonna be the top of our box where the flap is. So we're gonna cut out these two spaces on either side. Then at that other small tab, we're just going to cut either side of the tab into that next fold line. And you'll see how this box comes together. Okay, so here's the bottom of our box, those little tabs and those two bigger sections will fold in and then this will be the top flap. So now let's cut some pattern card stock. We're going to cut two pieces that are five and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. Two of those, those will go on the front and the back of the main part of our box. And then we're going to cut one that's five and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inch. And that will be um, decorating the front of the top flap. Now this is an optional step, but I am going to round the bottom two corners of our decorative paper and also the bottom two corners of the front flap of our box. I'm using a corner chomper and I'm using the one half inch corner round. Now I'm gonna start attaching the pattern cardstock to my box before I actually glue my box together. So this piece is gonna go, like I said, on the front of the flap and you're just going to center it with as much of an even spacing all the way around. Next, one of our larger pieces is going to go on the front of our box and then the other large piece will go on the back of our box. Now that we have our box decorated, we can put it together. I'm gonna to put a little bit of glue on these two flaps and I'm gonna fold up the back section of our box and glue those little flaps to the inside of the back larger flaps. Then we're gonna put glue also on the entire uh, surface of these other two flaps that they will fold up and glue to the outside of the sides of our box. Now, if we've cut the corners uh, straight, they should all line up 
And here's what the box looks like. You can see that top flap's gonna come down about halfway to the front. So you can just leave it loose. You could tie the whole box closed with a ribbon. I'm gonna put a Velcro dot here. Um, what I should have done actually is attached our little decorative circle. There you can see how those treats fit right inside. And then when you press down on the Velcro dots, you should have them in the right place. Now here I'm going to, um, once I get the treats inside, I'm also gonna add kind of a three-dimensional sticker to decorate the front of the box. I probably should have done this before I added the Velcro because I'm gonna end up having to add a second dot of Velcro. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I have these 3D stickers that go along with the paper. I'm gonna cover up the top half with some cardstock so that it's not sticky and then cut out that circle, that circle sticker. Then where we're going to attach it to the box, um, you can see with the adhesive there, it kind of sticks up quite a bit. So I'm gonna put another Velcro dot there to hold it shut. And there you go, super cute little treat box that, like I said, you could modify with any type of paper, with any type of Little Debbie or other little snacks inside, and super cute and fun to make. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and your continued support of my channel. And I hope everyone will tap that bell. Make sure your notifications are still set to all so YouTube should notify you each time I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. For DIY number three, we're gonna make a decorative bubblegum machine, but this one is gonna be filled with little love letters. So I'm using a bucket from Dollar Tree as well as the glass bowl. Um, you could use a terracotta saucer, but I'm using a cork uh, coaster for the top and a couple other items. So the first thing I'm doing is removing the handle from our little bucket. I could have kept it white, but I decided to paint mine with Waverly's Ballet Slipper. It's a really pretty soft pink. I'm gonna give it a couple of coats and then I am going to spray it with a clear matte spray so that the paint does not chip or scratch off. So we'll get that all the way painted and then we'll move on to the next step of our project. Now for the lid of my bubble gum machine, I am gonna use this cork coaster, like I said, this is from Ikea. Um, this is just what I had on hand, so feel free to use a terracotta pot um, saucer and we're going to paint this with crimson and also this little um, doll head that is a round bead that's flat on the bottom. We're going to paint this red as well to make the top little ball part for the lid for our bubble gum machine. Now once all of this is painted and dry I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and my hot glue to attach this round glass bowl vase to the bottom of the bucket to create our bubblegum machine. Then while that's drying, we're gonna glue our little flat bead onto the top of our coaster to be the lid for our gumball machine. Then for our little love letters inside, we're gonna cut some paper cardstock at two inches by three and a quarter inches. So I believe out of one sheet of cardstock, I could get like 11 of these. I didn't end up needing that many, but here's a piece that measures two inches across the top by three and a quarter inches tall. You can see I'm just, I'm getting like five out of one three and a quarter inch strip, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna score this at one and a quarter inches and at two and a half inches on the long side. So there you can see I have the left at one and a quarter and I'm using my embossing tool to um, score that then two and a half inches as well. The last thing you're gonna do is on that two and a half inch side, that tiny flap at the top, we're gonna mark where the center is, the one inch mark, and then we're going to cut 
two diagonal cuts from that pencil mark down to that first fold to make the little triangular flap that would be like the top of an envelope. So just take your time, get it lined up on your trimmer. You could definitely do that with scissors as well. Then fold on each of those fold lines and you can see how it folds up to be a tiny cute little envelope. I did go ahead and use a little bit of adhesive just to keep it together so it wouldn't pop open. And then we have a cute little heart sticker that's gonna seal it shut. So I did do these in a variety of colors. Then to kind of cover where the glue connected these two pieces, I'm just taking a Valentine ribbon that I had in my stash and I'm gonna hot glue it all the way around the bottom of the bucket, which is like the middle of our gumball machine. I decided on this project to use a couple of my Magnolia stencils. These are from the Valentine Rolling Pins. I decided to make the side of our gumball machine here say hugs and kisses. So I'm getting that centered and then pressed down where the letters are so that I can stencil this onto the side of our gumball machine using Old Glory Red chalk paste. Then I decided to use one more stencil from this pack, just the 25 cents we're gonna put down here at the bottom, centering that as well to kind of go along with the bubblegum machine theme for this project. We're gonna use Old Glory Red to stencil this image as well. Now, once our stencils were completely dry, I'm gonna take also some of this glittery red uh, decorative shred that I picked up at Dollar Tree. You can put um, any type of crinkle you want in here. You could even use like some cotton batting. And I'm just gonna kind of put in my four different colors of the little love letters that I made. These were really fun to make and super cute. I plan on making some more of these love letters, maybe in a larger form for a garland. For a complete list of all the supplies I've used in today's projects, please click the down arrow next to the title of this video. That will open up the description box where you will find a detailed list for each project as well as links to my Amazon storefront and my Magnolia Design Company website. For DIY number four, we're gonna use two of these wood hanging heart signs from Dollar Tree, one of these plastic heart treat containers, some baker's twine, some greenery, and some ribbon to make a really cute Valentine project. Now, I love the size of these wood hearts, but they're a little on the thin side. So what I did once I removed the two hangers is I'm going to take some of the super glue, wood glue from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna glue these two hearts completely together. Now I did make sure they lined up perfectly before I glued them down so I could get one nice thickness of the wood heart. Then using my clamps, I'm gonna go all the way around the heart using all my big ones and then filling in any gaps with my smaller craft ones. Once that wood glue was completely dry and I had my nice thicker heart, I'm giving the front a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once 
Once that was completely dry, I'm gonna take my small little sander here and distress the edges just a tiny bit. Um, also add a little distressing if you want to the front surface. Now I have some of these plastic Valentine containers. I'm just gonna use one. And this was probably the hardest part of this project was to get this uh, same glittery shred that we used in the previous DIY to stay inside the little treat container. So I'm gonna get it in as best I can, put the lid on, and then we'll just trim any that is sticking out and continue to try and get it where it's all fitting inside the plastic heart. However, this is super cute. You could put regular shred in here if you wanted, but I kind of liked the glittery. Then taking some red and white Baker's twine, I'm just going to make a little string hanger for our Valentine. You'll see how we're gonna use this in a minute. Coming back to our big wood heart, I'm taking some black and white Baker's twine this time, hot gluing it to the back, and then we're just gonna loosely wrap this like three or four times around our heart for a little added decoration. You can see I'm gonna anchor it with some hot glue every once in a while, just to make sure it doesn't all fall down as this is a curved edge shape. We're gonna make another messy bow similar to the one we made for DIY number one. I'm using a lot of those same ribbons and I'm gonna cut two pieces of varying lengths so that once I dovetail them and place them crisscross on top of each other, we'll get a nice variety of thicknesses and colors and patterns showing through in our messy bow. And again, once we have all of our ribbons lined up crisscross, we're gonna take a thin piece of jute twine, lay it across the center, flip it over, and as we pull our knot tight on our string, we're pushing and squishing the ribbons together so that they all lay really nice. Tie that second knot really tight, and then we'll be able to flip it over and fluff it. You can also trim at this point if you'd like, which I believe I did do off camera. Then once you have your bow how you want it, we're gonna glue it right here in the center where the baker's twine is kind of crisscrossing across the front of our heart. Then taking this medium sized clothespin from Dollar Tree, I'm going to hook the baker's twine for the plastic heart on it and I'm gonna hot glue the clothespin to the heart there right under the center of our bow and then glue another one of these small pink wood hearts from Dollar Tree right there to the center of the bow as well. I love this, it's so cute. It just needs a couple more touches. So I was able to find these beaded garlands from Dollar Tree, I got a white one and a black one. I'm just gonna cut this little rainbow off and I'm gonna take some of the black beads and some of the white beads and put them onto this jute twine we are gonna make a beaded hanger for our heart. Mm -hmm. 
So now that I've made the holes a little bit bigger, I'm going to put one end of our jute twine through from the front to the back. We're gonna tie a pretty good size knot so that the string doesn't pull back through and then push our beads down. We'll do the same thing on the other side and then we will have our super cute beaded hanger onto our wood heart. You can see I did two black, two white, and I just kept doing that pattern for this heart. You can do whatever color beads you'd like. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of this greenery, put some hot glue on the back or the bottom of the stems, and we're just gonna glue a few pieces, kind of peeking out from behind our messy bow, just to add some touch of greenery and farmhouse to this hanging sign. And I love the finished product. I hope this inspires you to see how you can take a variety of items and put them together to create something truly unique and beautiful. If you love home decor DIY videos like this, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and they will show it to more and more viewers. So DIYs five and six were kind of filmed in conjunction with each other. We're gonna make some small risers as well as some Valentine block signs using a variety of items from my stash. So these little round plaques, you can get these sometimes at Dollar Tree. I actually got a package of four for $3.99, which is actually a little cheaper than Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use two of them for this project. I'm gonna paint one of them with ballet slipper, this nice soft pink. The other one we're going to paint red. I'm also gonna take one of these blocks of wood. I believe I ordered these from Amazon, but you could use any type of scrap wood. Gonna paint one of them crimson red. The other one I'm going to Mod Podge with this pink and white Buffalo gingham scrapbook paper. I did spritz a little water on the back to help it adhere down to that Mod Podge. So next, we're going to kind of decide with our uh, sander here. We're gonna sand down the sides, get any of that extra scrapbook paper off. Also distress a little bit with our painted block. And we will also distress our small circle risers as well with this little sander. For the scrapbook paper block, I'm gonna take some Scrabble letters from my stash and I'm going to spell out Be Mine. Of course, you can put whatever message you would like. And you can see that they're kind of shifted over to the right a little bit because I am going to add some twine around the block on the left side for a little bit more farmhouse look. But first, we're gonna get all of these glued down and I am able to use the lines on the paper to try to get them as straight as possible. We're gonna add one of these heart stickers also below the words, be mine. And then again, like I said, attach these uh, black and white twine there to the back. And then we're just gonna wrap it a few times and then tie it off. So the red block, we're gonna stand tall and I'm gonna use another one of these galvanized hearts that I pulled off a Dollar Tree sign. And then this word love is a wood word sticker from Hobby Lobby in their scrapbook um, sticker section. And I'm just putting a couple little dots of hot glue to help that uh, stay reinforced. I'm gonna do the black and white twine at the bottom of this one as well. So here's our two blocks. I hope this gives you some ideas. Of course, you could also stencil on these blocks as well. All right, like I said, now that we have our risers, our round 
um, plaques all painted and dry. I am gonna sand and distress those a little bit as well. You could put your bead feet on the bottom or on the top, but first I'm going to use a chippy brush and on my pink riser, I'm going to just dry brush streaks of some white chalk paint. And then we'll do the opposite on the white circle plaque with some pink streaks. I'm gonna use four round beads for the feet on each of my risers. So I'm gonna paint four of these beads with white chalk paint and four of them with pink. I decided to use the different size circles as the top of the riser. So I'm gonna glue my four beads on the bottom flat side of each of my risers. I'm putting the white bead feet on the pink riser and then I'll use the pink beads to be the feet on the white riser. And here are the finished risers with the little Valentine blocks. I love this. There's so many other ideas swirling around in my head. So feel free to take this idea and definitely make it your own. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please don't forget to let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. And we'll see you next time. Take care.